point, we have um, only looked at statements, determining whether statements are true or false. And now we're going to look at when you take a bunch of statements and put them together to try to make an argument and see if we can determine if an argument is valid or invalid. There are two ways we're going to do that. In section 3.5, we're going to use Euler diagrams. And in section 3.6, we're going to use truth tables. So let's get started. There are two types of Euler diagrams that basically we're going to set up. Those that involve arguments with universal quantifiers. Universal quantifiers are the words like all or every. That describes a characteristic of every um, object in the set or person um, in the set or whatever's in the set. And then there's existential quantifiers, and we'll be making Euler diagrams for existential quantifiers. Existential quantifiers just um, guarantee that at least one exists. Sometimes we use the word some, uh, we'll use the word most, we'll use um, at least one. These diagrams will have to look a little bit different to represent a different scenario. So what is a logical argument? A logical, a logical argument is made up of premises, which are just statements, um, statements of assumptions that we're making. And then there'll be a conclusion, which is a fact that we believe that our premises support. Together, the premises and the conclusion create an argument. As an example of an argument that has two premises, all rainy days are cloudy, today is not cloudy, therefore today is not rainy. I put in the word therefore here to indicate that this is a conclusion, but you can also have this line here to show that anything above the line represent premises, anything below the line is the conclusion. And by the way, as we go, if you have any questions, you can type them into the chat. All right, so um, in order to analyze this argument to determine if it's valid, to determine if these two premises are enough to support the conclusion that today is not rainy, we need to learn how to draw Euler diagrams. So for example, if we wanted to draw an Euler diagram to represent this scenario where all rainy days are cloudy and today is not cloudy, we're going to have a circle to represent rainy days and we're going to have a circle to represent cloudy days. And we need to draw our circles such that um, it represents the scenario described in the statement. When you're using a universal quantifier, all, that means that one of the circles is inside of the other. So on the left, I have put the rainy day circle inside of the cloudy days. And on the right, I've put the cloudy day circle inside of the rainy days. So which diagram, the one on the left or the one on the right, do you think represents the scenario that all rainy days are cloudy? So let's look at the one on the right. I'm going to put an X in the innermost circle. Okay, so let's say that our day falls in this innermost circle. The, the X represents today. So since the X is inside the circle that's cloudy, today is a cloudy day. But notice that X is also inside of rainy, yeah? So this X, if this is today, would be both cloudy and rainy. All right now, what if I moved X to the other part of the rainy day circle? Okay, then in this case, would X be cloudy or rainy or both? This X is only rainy, only rainy. It's not inside the cloudy circle, so it's only rainy, right? All right, so remember, our premise said all rainy days are cloudy, but here we have a rainy day that's not cloudy. So this circle, this rainy part, or sorry, this rainy circle has part of it that's in the cloudy day category, but outside over here, these are all rainy days that aren't cloudy. So this does not describe all rainy days being cloudy. So 
This diagram is actually not correct. In order to have all rainy days be cloudy, we need it to be the case that any time we put an X in the rainy day circle, that it also falls in the cloudy day circle, like this X here. Any X inside of this small red circle is going to also be in the big blue circle. So this is how you actually represent all rainy days are cloudy, the diagram on the left. Okay, now when you draw an Euler diagram, you need to draw it for both the premises, or sometimes there's even multiple premises. So the next premise is today is not cloudy. All right, so I need to draw an X to represent today. There are basically three regions that are possible to put the X. If today is not cloudy, would, it, would the X go inside the red circle, inside the blue circle, or outside of the circles altogether? Good, that's right. In order for today not to be cloudy, it has to be outside of that blue circle. So it's in neither the red circle nor the blue circle. Today is not cloudy, so that means it's on the outside of the cloudy day circle. All right, so now we have our, our uh, Euler diagram set up. And so now we're gonna ask ourselves, based on this diagram, is the conclusion valid? We've already drawn pictures of the two premises, and now we're asking, is this a valid conclusion for a person to come to? So today, based on where today is located, where the X is, would it be valid or invalid to conclude that today is not rainy? Well, in order for today to be rainy, it would have to fall inside the red circle. Does it fall inside the red circle? No, today is way out here. So this would be a valid conclusion to come to. Today is not rainy because it's not in the red circle. This is what we would call a valid argument and we demonstrated its validity by drawing a picture of the premises and then checking if that supports our conclusion. Here's another argument that involves the word all. All magnolia trees have green leaves. That plant has green leaves. Therefore, that plant is a magnolia tree. Again, when I read this, I, I say therefore to indicate that this is the conclusion. And the reason I know it's the conclusion is because it's below this line here. So all magnolia trees have green leaves is one premise. That plant has green leaves is another premise. Therefore, that plant is a magnolia tree. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is to identify what the circles are going to be. You can do that from this first premise. All magnolia trees have green leaves. So we need a circle for magnolia trees and we need a circle for things with green leaves. And then we're going to say that plant has green leaves. So we're going to draw an X for where that plant would have to go. But at your um, computer there, I would like you to sketch on a piece of paper two circles, one inside the other, because anytime you have the word all, one circle is going to be inside the other circle. And I'd like you to try to guess where the magnolia tree circle would be and where the green leaves circle would be. So since all of the magnolia trees have to fall into the category of green leaves, Magnolia trees are the smaller category, category. <clears throat> and green leaves is going to be the larger category. <coughs> All magnolia trees have green leaves. So isn't it true that if I put an X inside of the magnolia tree circle, that it automatically is also in the green, green leaves circle, so it's also got green leaves. That's what we mean when we say all magnolia trees have green leaves. All right, now that plant has green leaves. So I'm going to erase that X, okay? I'm gonna let the X represent that plant. Now remember, there are three regions where that X might go. It could go in 
the magnolia. It could go in green leaves or it could go outside of the diagram. What we have to decide is which one or more than one of these positions would be appropriate if we know that the second premise is true, that the plant has green leaves. Okay, so notice that the X on the outside of the green leaf circle is impossible. That cannot be right because we know that it has green leaves and this X is out, doesn't have the characteristics, so we can disregard that possibility. The X that's in the green leaves circle, but not in the magnolia circle, has green leaves, so this one is definitely a possibility. But the X in the magnolia circle also has green leaves because being inside the smaller circle implies it's in the larger circle as well and has both characteristics. So this one's okay as well. So we really don't know if the particular plant that we're talking about is in the smaller circle only or in, or sorry, in the larger circle only or in both the large and the small circle. So if I conclude that that plant is a magnolia tree, is that a valid conclusion? Do we know for sure that it's a magnolia tree? No, that's right, we don't know because it could be on the outside part of like the donut part. Okay, so this is actually an invalid argument. It's possible that it's a magnolia tree, but it's not guaranteed. We're not sure, so it's invalid. All right, now in general, when you're drawing Euler diagrams, when you have something of the form, a statement of the form, all A's or B's, then whatever the A characteristic is, is gonna be inside of the B characteristic. Those are the types of diagrams we've looked at so far. This is a universal quantifier, by the way all. So we're describing everything. Some A's or B's, well what that guarantees is that there's at least some overlap between the A and the B. It's possible that um, all A's or B's or it's possible just one of them, you know, it has that characteristic. So you're going to draw this as two overlapping sets. This by the way, sum is called an existential quantifier doesn't describe everything, just some of them have this characteristic, at least one. And then no A's or B's. In order for no A's to be B's, there would have to be no overlap between the two circles. No A's or B's. Okay, so this is just a tip when you're trying to draw a, pic a picture, an Euler diagram to represent an argument. These are three of the basic uh, scenarios you can have. This, by the way, is also a universal quantifier because it describes everything. Let's try this one. Is the following argument valid? <clears throat> this one has three premises. One, all expensive things are desirable. Two, all desirable things make you feel good. Three, all things that make you feel good make you live longer. And the conclusion, the therefore, all expensive things make you live longer. And by the way, um, just because an argument is valid doesn't mean that this is actually true. Remember, we're assuming the premises, we're making an assumption, and we're basing the validity of the conclusion on only the assumption that those things happen. So. It might not actually make sense in real life, but the argument is valid. Okay, so remember, whenever we have all A's or B's, let me go back here, we have one circle inside of another circle. So in this case, all expensive things are desirable. So the expensive things are inside of an inner circle, desirable is outside of that. But then desirable things all make you feel good. So desirable is inside of things that make you feel good. And then all things that make you feel good make you live longer. So we have another set of concentric circles. So this is the drawing of our um, premises. 
We have a circle for expensive things, a circle for desirable things. We have a circle for things that make you feel good. And then we have a circle for things that make you live longer. Can, can we conclude that all expensive things make you live longer? Well, since the expensive things, if I want to place an X for an expensive thing, I have to put it in the innermost circle. And that is still inside the things that make you live longer circle. So yes, this is a valid argument. Okay, let's look at one um, that doesn't involve an all A's or B's. It has an existential quantifier. Is this argument valid? Many students drive Hondas. I am a student, therefore I drive a Honda. How are we going to draw a picture of many students drive Hondas? We know that we want to have a circle for students and a circle for people who drive Hondas. We don't know that all of the students drive Hondas only some even if it says many all that means is an overlap right so here's my circle for students and here's for people who drive hondas okay now if i say i am a student then i need to put an x for to represent me so if i'm a student how many regions are there that that describe or include are included in students there are two so i could put the x here or i could put the x here and both of those would be inside the student category so now we look at our conclusion i drive a honda and we try to determine if it's valid remember this at these x's represent me i don't know if i'm in this category this category based solely on the premises so I don't know if I'm in the part of the student circle that's not driving Hondas or the part that is. So I can't say for sure that I drive a Honda. So this is an invalid argument. Okay, that's the end of Euler diagrams.